Hello everybody and uh, welcome to my uh, demonstration. I have chosen for my title uh, today, um, Happy Anniversary. Because as you know, the mid Ulster Flower Art Society are celebrating 40 years of the club. So for my first design, I thought I would use this uh, very traditional um, style container and also for the base I have uh, cake board covered in uh, velvet and then some braid around it. And we used to do these this 40 years ago when we were flower arranging. So this first design is just going to, to, to depict what we used to do uh, 40 years ago. Let's go to the Senate. And for my height in this design, I'm going to use the, uh, the, the delphiniums that are growing uh, in the garden. And uh, this design is just going to be made up of mainly garden plant material because 40 years ago, when demonstrators came to demonstrate to us, we, they used beautiful garden plant material. Just putting the, the delphiniums to give me height to balance the uh, container. The container I got some years ago at a national show, and it's soapstone. Uh, but it looks like uh, a very fine china. Just to cascade down over the uh, the rear rim of the container and to uh, tone in with the, the colour of the blue of the delphinium, I'm using the uh, cat mint. I'm just going to add in some of the uh, cat mint, this is uh, six, uh, six giants, just to uh, harmonise with the uh, uh, the brew to film which I've used for the, uh, the height. This is a herbaceous plant, comes up every year and uh, the cats love it, that's why the common name is the uh, uh, cat mint. Uh, when the, the club was formed uh, 40 years ago, uh, we would have used, we would have done the style of those days where it was um, traditional style, Hogarth curves, crescents, tibble centres, and the traditional triangle. And I'm just going to do a traditional triangle here. Just like you see, we're with the outline of the blue and the um, catman cascading down over the rim of the uh, container. I'm going to use these beautiful stops, and uh, these are lovely scent, uh, which will add to the, the arrangement. It just um, reinforces the, uh, the upright form of the um, of these, I've taken uh, all all the leaves off the um, of the flowers here just to give more impact. Just put a few towards the vine just to give depth. And we are our endeavour to uh, Mimi Park, our uh, founder, uh, president for forming the club. And the reason why she formed the club was that uh, she was uh, taking classes in her, the local technical college and the, um, the classes were coming to, to near an end and the uh, students said, well, Amy, what are we going to do now on a Tuesday night? And Amy said, well, would you like to, uh, would you like to form a club? And they sort of said, well, what's a club? And Amy was a member of the uh, Dungannon Club and she explained what the club was and uh, they said, oh yes, that would, would be good. So that's how it formed. Just like you see with the, the stops coming through there. And then just going to uh, add now some of the uh, pink spray carnations just to uh, add texture and uh, some bring the pink up through towards the top. And then just to cascade down, down over the, um, the container. I remember our first um, demonstrator was uh, uh, Doreen Adams, who was the uh, founder president of Nickvis, and uh, she came along to the Johnson Hall at the uh, Tag in Markerfeld and uh, did our first. Uh, open demonstration and she was a lovely flower arranger because she used mainly garden plant material and she was so gentle when working with uh, her flowers and I was greatly inspired by uh, Doreen Adams and uh, that's maybe the reason why I love garden plant material. 
just like to see with the um, carnations coming through there, just uh, bringing in the, the tones of the, the pink. And then I'm going to add in some of the uh, pastas in towards the center of the design, just to help me to hide the oasis and also give some impact uh, into the um, center. This hosta is a beautiful grey colour and it tones in lovely with the um, pinks. I'm a lover of uh, hostas and if you uh, have looked at the uh, video that Idel did of my garden uh, a few weeks ago, I told her that I had 103 different varieties from miniature to very, very large uh, hostas. Just going to add in just a few more here. And I just want just to cascade down over the rim. And there we have our hosta leaves in towards the centre, which draws the eye into the centre of the uh, design and helps to cover the oasis. I have another uh, hosta here trimmed with uh, white, and this is called uh, Thomas Hogg. And just to give a, um, a variation of colour here. The hostas, um, the uh, snails like the hostas, and uh, I find that on St Valentine's Day I would um, put down some slug pellets on St Valentine's Day before the um, hostas starts to uh, come through the ground. And um, this sort of works. I know some people might say, oh, what all about the birds, James? But I have plenty of birds uh, in the garden, from uh, thrushes to uh, blackbirds, robins, sparrows. So uh, I think I'm quite friendly with the, the wildlife in the garden. So just, like, just like you see, with that contrast of colour of the <coughs> um, green and the uh, Ivory age. Now I'm going to add in some jebras, and this jebra is called uh, Kimsey. Again, a delightful uh, pink uh, rounded form. So I'm just going to bring these down in a line down through the centre of the, the design just to create some uh, rhythmic movement. Jebras are um, sometimes quite difficult to arrange because their stems are quite soft. But um, if you put them into uh, the body of water uh, for about 10 seconds and then into a, a bucket of tap of water, not very, uh, not a, you know, just a shallow bucket of water, it seems to do well. Uh, because the, uh, why I put them in the shallow bucket of water is because the um, stems have a hairy stem and if you put them into deep water, then uh, the hairy stems get, get clogged up. Just adding a few towards the side here. And again, you can just turn the uh, the um, jebras. You have to have them all uh, facing front. Years ago, the stems weren't were very, you know, firm, and uh, but the breeders have really cultivated the land up there. Beautiful now to arrange. And it gets uh, quite a different varieties of colours and uh, doubles which is interesting. Again, these are just the mini gems and you get the standard ones which are quite high. Just going to add a few in towards the centre just to give depth of colour and to help to hide the oasis. So if you see how that's taking shape with the, the gerbers coming down through creating rhythmic movement and bringing your eye out to the side of the design. Just to give a contrast of colour and to a deeper colour I'm going to use this beautiful rose. Again, it links in uh, with, with the colour of the, uh, the gerberus, but it's just that slightly deeper colour, just to give the contrast and give a wee bit more weight of colour. Just going to thread these down through the design uh, to create rhythmic movement. And again, with the roses still in bud, it gives you uh, a different form from the roundness of the uh, gerberus. If you find well, with your roses when you arrange them in a design and perhaps they um, drip a wee bit, just uh, remove them, put the ends into boiling water for about 10 seconds and then put the whole stem in um, 
and flour in cold water overnight if possible. And when you wake up, the little flour will have both up as well. And then you just pop it back into your uh, arrangement. Just gonna add just a few more just towards the, the sides here. And again, it gives a contrast of, uh, of texture as well, the silky texture of the rose petals to the more rough texture of the um, chevre. So I'm going to bring one out towards the, the front here. But during, during the formation of our club, you know, we have had lots of members that have come through the, the club and also uh, our club uh, members have won prizes at different shows and have, have um, also uh, represented uh, the club in different uh, uh, events as well. And add one more. that you see with the, the roses coming through, just giving that different uh, contrast of form and adding sort of a wee bit of paper colour. Just going to add in some of the uh, Acamila Moss, which is um, quite an attractive uh, plant to have in the garden. It's herbaceous so it dies down uh, uh, in the winter time and then it comes up in the summer. It's um, interesting because um, it will, it will seed itself throughout the garden and again um, it uh, is lovely when the um, when the dew is on the, the leaves they're just like little beads of water I'm just going to add one more so of height just to carry that lime green and again the contrast of the lime green against the pink is pleasing as well. Should just cascade it over the rim there. Senecchio. This is uh, Senecchio grey with the grey velvety texture. And again, uh, it used to be called Senecchio, now it's called uh, Brachyglottis. And uh, it just adds just a wee bit more interest to the design. Just filling up some of the spaces that may be in the design. I'm just going to add a bit, a bit there. And there we have our first design to celebrate 40 years of the Medusa Flower Society with a very traditional style. So for my uh, next design, I thought we would sort of travel through the years of the club and we're now into the 1980s. And in the 1980s, uh, European designs were introduced to uh, our clubs. The uh, demonstrators would have went to workshops on uh, European designs. And uh, we were inspired by, by the Europeans and this design is a parallel, but we, in the European designs, would have the, um, 
the Italian masks, the hand tie bouquets, and all those different styles. And then I've just uh, started with the disc design with some of the foliages, and I'll talk through the foliages as I do this. For more of the upright, I have used the um, uh, variegated uh, iris leaves that grows in the garden, and I'm just softening these with the uh, beautiful sprays of the um, variegated sun and sea. You see. I have used um, costas down at the base. This is a house called uh, Gold, Gold Standard, which is uh, an attractive uh, house as well in the garden. I have used this beautiful um, variegated one, which is so uh, grey colour, which uh, links in with the colour of the, um, the little container. A few leaves of the uh, Heliborus viditis or the stinking uh, helibor as the as a common name and it has uh, minute green flowers aged with uh, red and then just uh, a wee bit of the um, daphne l'oreal just to cover up the, the bag there you give a contrast of texture in the this area which is known as ta the tapestry i'm just using this variegated uh, conifer it just gives a contrast of texture from the uh, smooth and rough textures of the uh, uh, the other foliages, and then just uh, adding just a wee bit of the uh, uh, golden box here, just like you see how that is taking shape. And again, the height to balance the uh, the width of the um, the arrangement. Just to give you some height, I'm going to use the uh, irises, which will uh, harmonise with uh, the iris leaves because they have a little yellow variegation. And also, you associate as it's growing in um, a damp area. When the uh, Europeans uh, styled this uh, design, um, the theirs was quite stiff. So then, when it came over to do the mainland, us flower rangers, then we decided to make it a little bit softer. And uh, with the um, characteristics of a parallel, it's actually gripping the flowers and the foliages in blocks of colour. Just bring these down in a line down uh, both sides. This um, iris is called uh, Blue Blue Magic. So we hopefully have some magical powers here this morning. the blocking of the blue through there. Then I'm just going to add a gerber to just give a contrast of form. This is a exquisite colour of a gerber, a double one. And again, this is called uh, Anna is the name of this one. Just trying to sort of to create a herbaceous border here with the, um, the flowers. And that's what uh, a parallel design is supposed to depict you know, there's a border of flowers. And then we can just bring some coming out towards the front here. Then we just balance the other side by using the same flowers. Just a couple more. see with the chevrons and the irises on both sides. So we need to put something in towards the centre so I'm just going to uh, add in uh, a few roses here. And 
again, just uh, cutting the premature at a slant, which makes it easier to win the uh, oasis. The more surface of the uh, stem gets in contact with the water. When the uh, European designs uh, came out, uh, when they were installed, it took me a long time to grasp the um, uh, the way that the Europeans arranged the flowers because well, with me being an additional person it's just hard just to um, change my ways of uh, arranging. And we used to have, uh, well, we do still have uh, a lady who uh, lived in Europe for a long time and uh, she then came to live in England and uh, we, she did a, a demonstration on all European styles and it was quite interesting to see that. Like you see with the wee bit of the yellow coming through there. Then to just to uh, harmonise and link that, I would just put a few uh, to each side of this design. Just going to recess, just a few here. Damaged petals, just uh, remove some of them. Just like you see with the roses on the other side, just harmonizing and bringing your eye over to one side <coughs> to the other. Then just added a little bit of uh, <coughs> paint to it now, I'm just going to add some of these uh, little uh, anemone type of uh, crescents. Just a little cluster here, low, low down. <clears throat> nice say by the way, you're you sort of bringing pink into it, but uh, if you look at the um, the inside of the uh, iris, it has uh, like a pinky, purpley colour. It just harmonises nicely. Just to add a little bit more interest of use of some of the Estranthia from the, the garden. And this is Estranthia Roma, uh, again, herbaceous plant. And uh, the common name is uh, Hattie's Pink Cushion. Because little stamens in, in the centre looks like uh, little pins. <coughs> Europeans in the 1980s. Now we're moving into the uh, 1990s and in the, in the 90s uh, contemporary designs came into vogue and here we have um, a lovely pot and uh, just to harmonize with the pot I put some uh, uh, canes here and I've tied them with some uh, uh, red wire and I have hookra leaves and the green um, house was called Devon Green. So I thought I would do this one sort of all red to uh, sort of link in with our ruby anniversary. So I'm going to add in some uh, carnations to this design. In the uh, 
early 1990s. Um, contemporary groups uh, sprung up all over um, England and uh, also here in, in, in Northern Ireland. And we have a contemporary group called uh, Inspirations, which I used to be a member of. <clears throat> it was good because the um, contemporary groups, they were there sort of for us to experiment with the plant material. And we would invited the European designers to come across to do uh, workshops and uh, demos. We are indebted to Carl, Carl Firmstone, who was a member of NAFIS over in England, and she was the one that sort of started up the contemporary groups. So I've just added um, a line of connections there coming down to one side, and a complementary colour scheme with the red and the green. Just to balance the other side, I'm just going to add in a few more of the uh, connections, so they'll blow down to one side. <clears throat> and don't be frightened to cut your uh, plumber down uh, uh, short. Sometimes people don't like to cut when you have a long stem and just cut them about two inches. Just going to recess this through here. And then just one more. Coming up a wee bit higher. Let you see with the two lines of the uh, condition. Again, the contrast of texture from the shiny texture of the container to the rough texture of the um, carnations. And then when we're celebrating our ribby, we thought I would bring some roses. And again, we're just going to add these sort of short. And with the uh, contemporary uh, design, it's more like experimenting with, with plant material. And uh, sometimes we use uh, different types of uh, mechanics. We will use uh, uh, plastic tubes, glass tubes, and uh, lots of different things that we would have used in our traditional style. I just want to um, <clears throat> bring these up straight, sort of to uh, emphasise the upright movement of the um, canes. Just let you see how it's taken shape. And they're just going to add in just a few toes of that here. <clears throat> then to add uh, a bit more interest and a bit of uh, texture, I'm going to use uh, the hypericum berries. Again, a large uh, berry, and again, uh, they harmonize uh, with the uh, container, and uh, also it uh, gives a contrast of texture so that the shiny texture of the container goes right up with the uh, hypericum berries. This hypericum berry is called Magical Red Giant, so they are quite large. Just very carefully, just push the um, stems down through the leaves and do no harm. So you can see how the um, the hypericum berries are now drawing your eye up to uh, the top of the design and that shiny texture of the hypericum berry is helping to balance the, um, the shiny container. And then 
because I thought like we could maybe make some uh, more r r rhythmic movement here. So I'm just going to try bring this through. <coughs> Then I've kept some of the wire here so I can just gently keep it in place. And just, and just be careful if you're using this type of cane because the cane is, uh, well, it's, uh, it's quite a natural plant material and if you put it into uh, a wet oasis, uh, the end of it will get soft, so what you need to do is to put some uh, varnish on to the end just to you know, make it uh, more waterproof. Just going to add in some more. And if you have enjoyed my uh, demonstration today, perhaps you, the members, would send in to Dell some of your uh, designs or the, your favorite um, your favorite uh, plant in the garden or uh, perhaps uh, create an arrangement to depict the uh, uh, anniversary and uh, send it to uh, Edel by the 18th of uh, June and her email address is edelmichael125 at gmail.com and hopefully our Facebook page will be flooded with uh, ideas and beautiful pictures of your garden. So I hope you've, you've enjoyed my interpretation of Happy Anniversary to the Mid-Oster for our Art Society. Thank you very much.